Den nye Barbersen Wilkins 801, ja, den ser identisk ut med 800 fra 2015. Ja, det er noen små kosmetiske forskjeller. Men låter den likt? Det skal vi finne ut av. Husk å trykke like og abonner på vår YouTube-kanal. For å få en forklaring på hva som er forskjell mellom 801 og 800, har vi fått en fra Bowers & Wilkins til å forklare hva som har skjedd. They seem quite similar. Well, in some cases they are. I mean, the overall size of the diaphragms are the same, so in both models, a 25mm diamond dome tweeter, in both models, a 6-inch continuum cone mid-range, in both models, a 10-inch uh, aerofoil profile or aerofoil base cone. Where you see evolutions and improvements are mostly internal. This system is critically braced inside with aluminium on the baffle and it has inside some U-shaped sections of aluminium bracing horizontally across um, the matrix assembly. If you move on to where we are today with this one though, the matrix assembly now has both horizontal and vertical sections bracing the matrix to improve the stiffness of the system. The most significant changes though are up and in particular in terms of the motors. Let's start with the high frequency. If you look at the length of the tweeter tube on this one, you can see it's a significantly longer length than it is on the last generation. So this has the new elongated tube loading system, which works better because it reduces the resonant frequency from the diaphragm by extending the tube length. We also have a new two-point decoupling system. This one has a decoupling system, which as you can see, you can almost lift the tail up. This is now held in place on two points, so it doesn't do that anymore. We can only move it forwards and backwards. If you move to the head externally, it looks the same, because basically it is, but internally, um, it's got much better damping, uh, particularly towards the back sections of the turbine blades. That's again using that textile damping material. How it actually fits the top of the cabinet has been improved. As you can see on this model, this is wood, and this section here is machined out and then the head sits into a machined out section here in this new generation product. This is an aluminium plate, this whole section here. So we have essentially the aluminium assembly resting within a very predictable and repeatable aluminium cutout in a very stiff plate at the top of the cabinet, which is working to further stiffen up the cabinet and reduce resonance. And again, this whole system, this mid-range assembly is floating, it's fully decoupled. What we found is that a traditional cone with a spider operating behind it. As the cone's moving and the spider's moving in sympathy, the spider's actually radiating some energy. It's actually effectively operating like a very small diaphragm. Um, and by producing a new system, which is much more open in form, uh, we get a significant reduction, depending on frequency, as much as 80 dB in reduction in noise off the new suspension compared to a traditional fabric spider. And that translates into a much cleaner and more believable sound through the mid-range. So although at first glance it looks similar, this is completely new, this is largely new, this is new, and a lot of the internal stuff inside the cabinet's new, the bottom of the cabinet's new, and the crossover's new. So actually, it's a new speaker. And the 800 series, that has been a long history yes, from absolutely. 1979? That's correct, 1979. So the name the original loudspeaker first had, 801, comes from it being the first loudspeaker for 1980. That's what that comes from, 801, uh, of a new generation or a new series that was designed to be no holds barred. Right from the start, 801 was conceived as a speaker that had a dual function. It could be used by the domestic customer, but also by the professional studio user. So. Even the first generation models had things like power protection circuit filters that studio engineers loved. It meant that you're very unlikely to damage the loudspeaker if you turned it up too much. So it's a very long established one. Over the years since then, although it's evolved a lot in certain ways, like we've gone from, for example, a soft dome to an aluminium dome to a diamond dome in high frequency and from a Kevlar to a continuum in mid-range and from Kobex to paper Kevlar to row a cell to aerofoil in the base. So there's lots of diaphragm changes. The basic principle has remained the same. And the basic principle is, 
each main section of the system is divided up into its own separated enclosure. So the high frequency lives in its own section, the mid-range lives in its own section, and the low frequency lives in its own section. Hørte dere plus forskjell på de to høytalerne? Ja, det gjorde vi. Det er ikke dramatiske forskjeller, men det er små og gode forskjeller på hele frekvensspektret. Vi hadde fire låter som vi prøvde. Først var det Dead Mouse med Sia. Mange har selvfølgelig hørt den låta på show. Skikkelig tøff bass i bånd. Skikkelig typisk Dead Mouse. Og her så ble bassen strammere. Vokalen ble litt mer oppløst. Og ikke minst var det en eksplosiv dynamikk. Jeg måtte faktisk ta frem DB-måleren for å sjekke om han hadde skrudd opp volumet et hakk eller to. Men det hadde han ikke. Så hørte jeg Max Richards moderne versjon av de fire årstider av Vivaldi. Her var det helt klart mer rom rundt fiolinisten. Det virket mer troverdig. Fiolinen låt rett og slett litt mer avslappet og naturlig. Det var enda tydeligere på Ray Charles sin låt How Long Blues, hvor instrumentene rett og slett bare falt mer på plass, og ikke minst så åpnet lydbildet seg mer. Nei, det er ikke dramatiske forskjeller fra 800, så hvis du har en 800, så er det ikke sånn at du må løpe til butikken og kjøpe en ny. Men det er de små forskjellene. Det er liksom de siste 10 prosentene som vi gærningene er på jakt etter. Til slutt hørte vi Rory Gallagher og I Could Have a Religion. Det er et live-opptak, og her fikk man litt mer driv i de nye 801-høytalerne, kontra de gamle 800-høytalerne. Det var rett og slett litt mer punch. Det er noe med dynamikken i de nye høytalerne som ikke blir gjenskapt av de gamle. Så det er faktisk forskjell, selv om de ser identiske ut. Og jeg må med glede si at etter å ha hørt den nye 801 spille dårlig på show, så var det deilig å høre det i lytterommet til Bowers & Wilkins, hvor de faktisk låt veldig bra. Husk at du må trykke like og abonnere, slik at vi kan lage flere videoer som dette.